I'm here with Kevin Casey, a developer and owner of his consulting firm, Nanologic. Kevin has a cool tutorial on DeveloperWorks where he tapped the IBM Q experience to create his own version of the classic shell game. Kevin, thanks for stopping in. Hi, thanks, Scott. So uh, your tutorial that you've created here and using this game, I assume that part of your motivation was you just wanted to show people that they can actually tap into quantum processing right now through the cloud. Is that part of the motivation? Yeah, Scott, that's correct. Uh, so, you know, one of the things when I um, uh, speak to other people about quantum computing is, you know, they want to know what, what you can use it for. Um, and it does, you know, have some special sort of edge cases where it is actually a lot better than classical computing. Okay. Um, and, I, you know, so I, I was pondering the ways in which I could, you know, demonstrate uh, one of those ways um, and make it something tangible that, you know, the everyday person would understand. Um, so I, I created a little game that you can play on the Internet um, that uh, puts the quantum processor in, um, in the role of a person playing the classic con artist shell game. Um, they have to find the ball underneath the shell. All um, right. So uh, go ahead and share if you want and then dig into it. We'd love to see how it works. All right, great. All right, so uh, this is uh, the shell game. Um, and similar to the classic con artist game, um, we are going to uh, place a ball underneath one of these cups. Let's say we were to put it underneath cup number three. Um, now we're gonna allow the quantum computer to actually figure out where that ball is located. Um, if this was a classical computer, it would perform uh, a basically an unstructured search. And by that, I mean it would start with cup number one, and it would flip cup number one over and say, is there a ball there? Yes or no. If it isn't, it goes to the next cup. If it is, yeah, great, we found the ball. Um, you know, it's over. The, un the unstructured search has found, has found the ball. Um, so a classical computer, at worst case, would be able to perform, would have to look under all four cups, you know, assuming you hit the ball under number four. Right. Um, the quantum computer does things a bit differently. And, um, you, you know, the power of it, it, we won't see it with four cups. But if we had four million or four billion or four trillion cups to look under, the quantum computer would beat the classical computer hands down. And that's because it can actually um, use a little technique called amplitude amplification um, to basically look at all the states of all the cups at the same time. And based on the probability waves um, that the quantum processor is, is using in its computations, um, can actually um, discern where the ball would be um, based on the size of those probability waves. Okay, um, I see. Yeah. yeah, so let me go ahead and click the little button here. And um, when we do this, uh, just so you know what's happening is in the background, we're going to take the state of the game. Um, we're going to encode that into a quantum assembler language um, called CASM. Uh, and then we're going to wrap that up in a JSON package. I'm going to pass it to IBM's web API. Um, IBM's obviously going to take that JSON, unravel it. Uh, it's going to pull out the quantum assembler code and then pass it to its quantum processor um, in its laboratory. Um, and then it'll get the result back again in, in Chasm. Uh, it'll wrap that back up into uh, a JSON format and pass it back to us. And voila, we'll have our answer. So let me go ahead and hit the compute button. And boom. Um, so what we see here is the quantum processor computed that, you were, uh, that we hit the ball under shell three. Um, and that is indeed where we put the ball. Um, and, you know, just for reference sake, so you can see what's going on, uh, on the left here, this is the code that was passed um, in JSON format to the API. Um, and this is the result that we got back. Um, so um, the, the interesting thing about this, Scott, is that there's very little um, code here going on that is not regular code. Any developer familiar with working with web APIs and JSON and passing JSON back and forth um, will recognize most of this code almost instantly. There's very little going on here that is a, that, that requires a little bit of sort of insider knowledge. And I'll, I'll go ahead and show some of this to you right now. All right. Um, now, this is all available on GitHub. So you can go to GitHub, you can, uh, you know, look at this code yourself um, and make changes and explore it as you see fit. Um, 
in particular, what I want to show you here is the uh, the section of code that we use to um, create uh, the chasm code. And um, there, there's really three parts to it. There's sort of an initial section of chasm code. Um, we're including a library. We're setting up uh, how many uh, qubit registers and how many classical registers we're going to use in our experiment. Um, and then we encode the state. So if you had selected uh, cup number three, this is the, the chasm code we'd use to encode that state. So, um, uh, you know, we'd set a Hadamard gate on qubit one, a Hadamard gate on qubit two, et cetera. Um, and that, that is setting us up for uh, the state where we've selected um, cup number three. Um, then at the end, um, this is really the magic. This is Grover's algorithm being applied to these qubits. So irregardless of what state you've chosen, the application of, the, of this structure um, is the Grover's algorithm, and it's what produces the amplification, um, the amplitude amplification trick that actually solves uh, for the unstructured search. Um, so we put the, um, those three pieces of chasm code together. We return this uh, back to the main program, which is uh, calling this. Um, and uh, it's all submitted via web API pretty simply. It all comes back as JSON. We parse that JSON, and we display everything on the web page. Um, so in short, it's a pretty simple thing, but it's, it's really pretty cool in that we're, for free, accessing IBM's quantum platform and uh, actually using some very cool um, and different types of computing tricks that uh, aren't possible on a, on a classical com computer. Kevin, this is terrific, and uh, we, we certainly want to encourage people to check out the IBM Q experience on their own and see how they can utilize the power of, of quantum processing and check out your tutorial. Uh, both links are right here on the screen, and you'll find them in the show notes. And uh, they can get the code, right? You, you posted the code on GitHub. so people Yeah, can... that's correct. Yeah, it's available. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. It's my pleasure, Scott. Thank you. Thank you.